Hello, this is Alex Baker. I'm joined by Chris Randone. We're going to go over how to use Fantasy Cruncher Randomness to make your lineups for Fantasy Baseball. Chris, how are you doing? I'm good, man. Good morning. Uh, 9 a.m. West Coast early slate today. So uh, we got some time to do some nice instructional videos. Sounds like a plan. So Randomness, pretty good feature for mixing it up on Fantasy Cruncher. How do you usually, what, what do you usually try to achieve by using the Randomness setting? So, you know, randomness for me, it kind of adds a variable to the range in the analysis um, to each projection. So basically what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for some more accurate lineups that also show some uh, different variations, maybe different variations that I wouldn't have looked at. And also it helps not all my lineups be the same, which is very important. Absolutely. And I think the randomness is more what you see in an actual game where you can make your best projection, but the actual results could be far different almost all the time. And randomness kind of accounts for that. It creates a random outcome that could potentially happen on a, on a night. And then it optimizes your lineup based on that outcome. So I got yesterday's slate pulled up here on Fantasy Cruncher Rewind, a very useful tool. Okay. Um... So what, uh, the way you set randomness, you just go to advanced options. Uh, you can choose either classic randomness or the, the new randomness with Fancy Cruncher Pro. And uh, the difference is, is a classic randomness gives an even probability of all the outcomes within the range. Normal is centered around a bell curve. So if you say um, you have a projection of 20, the randomness is 100 then uh, five out of six outcomes are going to be between 50% uh, of the projection and 150%, and then those tail ends are going to be a little bit less likely to happen. So that's more uh, analogous to what a, a actual result probability would look like compared to just totally randomizing it. So have you gotten a chance to try out the new randomness? Yeah, yeah, I have. And to be honest with you, it really helps open up your eyes to your analysis even more. And it's just like you said, you, you definitely want different variations of lineups, uh, especially when it comes to either stacking or doing multi entries. Um, the more you kind of stick together with the same similar type of lineup, uh, you really hurt yourself because you're only looking for just basically a small amount of plays to go off. And if that doesn't work into your favor, uh, it kind of ruins your your day for the slate. So having the randomness tool allows you to put yourself in a position of seeing a lot of variations of lineups, which then gives you the ability to maybe notif notice someone that maybe got put into a lineup that you didn't look at before that helps you kind of hone in on that uh, and kind of do some more research on that particular player. Absolutely. You're not going to see a lot of contrarian lineups or contrarian players end up in your lineup unless you use randomness. And those are players you're going to need to win. Those one percenters that go off, there's going to be at least one every day. Exactly. So I got a tool from Dave, the creator of Fantasy Cruncher. And uh, what this does is it demonstrates the difference between the classic randomness and the new normal distribution. What I found is that with the new normal distribution, you need to set randomness much higher than you used to. And what I, before I would set randomness like 25%. So I'll, I'll simulate that. What you see is um, with the old randomness, uh, you end up with a pretty even distribution from 15 to 25. But with the new randomness, most of the lineups uh, it simulates between 18 and 22. So if you want to really mix it up and get most of the lines between 15 and 25, you pretty much have to double it. Uh, even more than double it. So I said 50% randomness, and now I'm between mostly 16 and 24. So about 2.5 times the old randomness if you've been a long time user of Fantasy Cruncher. And uh, the way that Fantasy Cruncher calculates the new normal distribution, if you're familiar with your stats, is it takes half of the randomness percent. So right now I have a projection of 20, standard deviation of 10. Well, actually, uh, 
Ignore that. So uh, the randomness is 50. So 50% uh, of 20 is 10. And what a fantasy cruncher does is the normal distribution is it sets the standard deviation to 5. And then it simulates uh, potential lineups using the inverse normal function. And uh, if you if it goes beyond two standard deviations, it just caps it at two. Right. So now, now help, help people understand why that difference is so important when using that specific feature. So I think this more accurately creates real results that could happen. And uh, so if you have a picture of twenty projection, say like Strasbourg today. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, he's going to get in between 10 and 30. Um, it's going to take a, a lot of luck one way or the other for him to go beyond that range. And the closer it is to the projection, the more likely it is going to be to happen. So this really, if you set the standard deviation or the randomness to equal the true standard deviation of the players, what you're doing is you're creating a real outcome that would win the slate if it happened on that day. Right. You're giving yourself the best shot at putting together the highest possible scoring lineup, which which is something where if you're not putting yourself in that position, you're more than likely just going to be in the middle of the field compared to a lot of other teams who probably have the same teams as you. So giving yourself that ability to have more randomness allows you to really separate yourself to have different contrarian plays that a lot of people might not be on, which helps increase your potential of taking down a tournament. Absolutely. I think there's so much randomness in sports, especially baseball. If a guy is a millimeter off of uh, the target, it's going to be a fly out and not a home run. So it's just like the, the perfect lineup every day is just like the most random players you can think of. And, uh, when you generate a lineup using a lot of randomness, that like lineup on that day where it ran the simulation would be the winning lineup. So right. if you generate enough, then you kind of get a diverse range of outcomes that could, uh, if you're entering more than one lineup, that's going to, like, it simulates 150 different days, basically, and on each of the days, this different lineup would win. Right. So let's run a crunch here. Uh, first, I'm not going to use randomness. This is yesterday's slit. Okay. And what I'm seeing, I'm getting 100% of a lot of players. Kendrys Morales, mm -hmm. Jared Cole, Starlin Castro, Max Scherzer, all 100%. And uh, <laughs> if, uh, if anybody played the slate yesterday, they're going to know that lineup probably wouldn't turn out that good. <laughs> Jared Cole got eight points. Adam projected for twenty six. Yep. Uh, Kendrys Morales got three points. These are some serious duds. Mm hmm. So let's uh, let's run a, a crunch with a little bit more randomness here. Okay. So you gotta uh turn on the randomness feature and then decide the percentage. Uh, let's do one with the classic randomness. So I'm going to set it to 25%. So now we're still seeing a lot of players with really high uh, percentage owned. Starlin Castro at 69%. Nice. And uh, he, he only got three points. So like, still that's going to kill your lineups. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think that's one of the biggest things to point out is killing your lineups because just like Kendra Morales, if you have a hundred percent of him and let's just say you did 50 or a hundred lineups yesterday, it's more than likely that those 50 to hundred lineups probably didn't fare out so well, especially if you went cheap to go up in pitching and pay for that Garrett Cole. And that's something where now you only got eight points from your star pitcher. And then on top of that, you got nothing from Kendra Morales. And that's a big chunk right there of all your lineups, which, I mean, at the end of the day, is probably going to be a losing day, which this is why randomness is so key and why it's effective in constructing lineups. Absolutely. So I set the randomness now to 25%. I put some stacks, and I'm getting pretty much all Miami stacks. 
And uh, yesterday, I mean, Miami is not that great a team, so that's <laughs> raising some major alarm bells. What do you think? <laughs> they're so frustrated. I just, they're on a five game. Let's just point this out real quick. Miami's on a five game winning streak. Damn. They've scored they've scored more runs these last five games than I think they have in the last 27 or 28 games. That's unreal. It's just they're so bad. Their their lineup is uh, I mean they uh, what like I think like four or five guys bat under 225 and then the rest <laughs> are the rest are under 300. It's just like this should not be a major league team, but it is. But yeah, Miami was uh was one of those teams yesterday that you could uh put together with Scherzer and get that randomness going. And look, I mean, it, it paid off. So if you're using randomness and this shows up and then you did a Scherzer or um, even a DeGrom, I mean, you were looking good, especially if you had Yankees bats or some other expensive bats in your lineup. Yeah, I think uh, Miami really helped you get in the stud pitchers yesterday. It didn't really work. It's not the strategy I'd recommend. So um, what I'm doing now is I, ra I ran a crunch with 65% randomness classic. Now I'm only getting 40% Miami stacks, and uh, I'm getting a nice mix of other stacks. But now let's switch to the normal distribution randomness. I recommend setting this to 100 uh, for baseball. Mm -hmm. For my, uh, I've only ha I've been using it for a week, but I that's what I found to be kind of effective. Um, so actually now I'm getting even more Miami than when I was running 65% randomness. So the, my main takeaway here is if you're only using randomness to create your lineups and or differentiate your lineups, you're going to need to set it really, really high. So I'm going to, I'm going to go up to 150% here and see what kind of results I get. So now I'm getting 30% Miami stacks. So when you when you generate a lot of stacks with randomness what do you find you get a lot of lineups you don't want to put in or are they usually all pretty good yeah i mean what i like to do sometimes too is i'll up the randomness like you just said and it helps me kind of figure out how much of a percentage do i want a specific play so for instance like miami I think it's just going with what you feel is the proper percentage of playing in that slate. So if you want to have about 30% shares of Miami, playing around with the randomness will also help you kind of understand how to use it for future slates and really just get a good feel of what works best for you. Because, I mean, there's no right or wrong way to essentially go with how you want to play the slate and how much exposure you want. But randomness kind of helps you at least start developing a skill set to, to really know what kind of percentage should you allocate to teams depending upon the size of the slate. Yeah, I think it does a really great job kind of pinpointing what are going to be, what are the best teams as far as optimal lineups. We're seeing Miami by far and away was the optimal team to stack last night. That doesn't right. necessarily mean they're the best. So one thing I like to do when I'm constructing lineups with randomness is I will go into Fancy Cruncher, I will sort the lineups by projection, and I will go from bottom to top. So the top projected line was at 117. The bottom was at 95. I generated 300 lineups. So I'll just go through and delete the ones that got the lowest projections. And you're going to end up with a lot of those because you set the randomness so high. Okay. So I'll go through. I'll delete. Um, if I generated 300, maybe I'll delete the bottom 75 to 100. And then I will sort by ownership, uh, which you can do with Fantasy Cruncher Pro. Uh, and then you don't want your ownership to be too high, so I'm going to delete the highest owned lineups. Uh, I'm seeing the highest ownership lineups I generated were at 235 ownership added. Mm -hmm. The lowest were only at 65, so that's a huge range. That's a huge, yeah, that's a, well, that's a huge gap. Absolutely, and that's like the the great thing about the randomness is you you get, get a lot of different kinds of lineups. So you got to go through, you delete the outliers in uh, the metrics that are bad, like too high ownership, too low projection, and then you're left with some lineups that are in the sweet spot. Okay. So as far as uh, other ways to differentiate using Fancy Cruncher, we should mention those real quick. Uh, go over them in more detail in later videos so what other what other settings do you like to use um outside of randomness yeah 
Um, I think in the advanced options, uh, it gives you the opportunity to play with the unique players per lineup. And so, uh, for those of you who are wondering what that is or, or what it, what it, what it actually does is it's good for when you're entering different lineups, uh, it'll put a certain amount of unique players in your lineup. So I actually like to combine this with randomness. I don't know if, if you do, but sometimes I'll do two or three, depending upon the size of the slate, just to see what fantasy cruncher picks up that maybe I haven't seen. And that allows me to see and, and pick apart maybe some contrarian plays that I normally didn't look at before the slate that I will do a little bit more research on and see if I could fit them into some lineups. Absolutely. I think uh, it, it guarantees that you're going to have plays that are different from each lineup you generate. And that's important because if you're sorted by projection and by ownership, all the lineups that are going to be optimal in both of those categories are going to be similar. Exactly. So. When you set the uniques, it guarantees that they'll be different, at least by the number of players that you set. Mm -hmm. And then the other way is by setting player ownerships. Uh, one thing I like to do is multiply the projection by constant. That's, that's pretty easy to do when you upload the projections. And uh, the more of these you add in, the more lineups you're going to have to generate and then discard some of the bad ones. But I think that will help you... Uh, create a lot of lineups that are different, but also have a great shot of each winning on their own. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's also, I mean, you might have certain plays that you focused on for the day in certain stacks, but let's say you need some one-offs. And let's say you're looking at the projections and you're really not, really not liking what's coming up. I mean, going into that advanced options tool, messing around with the unique players per lineup, changing around the stacks and, and really seeing if you could fit those one-offs in. And then you're getting a list of one-offs that come in and it just, it really helps not only with constructing the lineups, but really seeing some, one of those one, 2% plays that no one's really going to touch, but you see them, you fit them in the lineup and you really put yourself in a position to have a, a unique play to take on a tournament that someone else might not have if that player goes off. Yeah. And my favorite part about that is when you get that 1% player that goes off, it's like, you get that great feeling, like you just figured out that sleeper that nobody else had. Right. So, uh, if you don't already have Fantasy Cruncher, uh, make sure to use our promo code, The Crunch. You can get half off your first month or weekly package. And thanks everybody for watching, and keep watching our series for more tips on how to use Fantasy Cruncher.